Good evening. In Salt Lake City, welcome to the first and only vice presidential debate of 2020, sponsored by the Nonpartisan Commission on Presidential Debates. I'm Susan Page of USA Today. It is my honor to moderate this debate, an important part of our democracy. In Kingsbury Hall tonight, we have a small and socially distant audience, and we've taken extra precautions during this pandemic. Among other things, everyone in the audience is required to wear a face mask, and the candidates will be seated 12 feet apart. To wear a face mask, and the candidates will be seated 12 feet apart. The audience is enthusiastic about their candidates, but they've agreed to express that enthusiasm only twice at the end of the debate, and now when I introduce the candidates. Please welcome California Senator Kamala Harris and Vice President Mike Pence. and Vice President Pence, thank you for being here. We're meeting as President Trump and the First Lady continue to undergo treatment in Washington after testing positive for COVID-19. We send our thoughts and prayers to them for their rapid and complete recovery and for the recovery of everyone afflicted by the coronavirus. The two campaigns and the Commission on Presidential Debates have agreed to the ground rules for tonight. I'm here to enforce them on behalf of the millions of Americans who are watching. One note, no one in either campaign or at the commission or anywhere else has been told in advance what topics I'll raise or what questions I'll ask. This 90-minute debate will be divided into nine segments of about 10 minutes each. I'll begin a segment by posing a question to each of you, sometimes the same question, sometimes a different question on the same topic. You will then have two minutes to answer without interruption by me or the other candidate. Then we'll take six minutes or so to discuss the issue. At that point, although there will always be more to say, we'll move on to the next topic. We want a debate that is lively, but Americans also deserve a discussion that is civil. These are tumultuous times, but we can and will have a respectful exchange about the big issues facing our nation.
question of the debate, I'd like to um, write a, uh, read a question that someone else wrote in the state to write essays about what they would like to ask you. And I want to close tonight's debate with the question posed by Brecklin Brown. She's an eighth grader at Springville Junior High in Springville, Utah. And here's what she wrote, quote, when I watch the news, all I see is arguing between Democrats and Republicans. When I watch the news, all I see is citizen fighting against citizen. When I watch the news, all I see are two candidates from opposing parties trying to tear each other down. If our leaders can't get along, how are the citizens supposed to get along? And then she added, your examples could make all the difference to bring us together, end quote. So to each of you in turn, I'd like you to take one minute and respond to Brecklin. Vice President Pence, you have one minute. Brecklin, it's a wonderful question. And um, let me just commend you for taking an interest in, in public life. I, I started uh, following the news when I was very young. And in America, we believe in a free and open exchange of debate. Uh, and we celebrate that. And it's how we've created literally the freest and most prosperous nation in the history of the world. I, 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 I will tell you that um, don't assume that what you're seeing on your local news networks is synonymous with the American people. You know, I look at the relationship between Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the late justice who we just lost from the Supreme Court, and the late Justice Antonin Scalia. They were on polar opposites on the Supreme Court of the United States, one very liberal, one very conservative. But what's been learned since her passing was the two of them and their families were the very closest of friends. I mean, here in America, we can disagree. We can debate vigorously, as Senator Harris and I have on this stage tonight. But when the debate is over, we come together as Americans. And that's what people do in big cities and small towns all across this country. So, I just want to encourage you, Brecklin. I, I want to tell you that um, we're, we're going to work every day to have government as good as our people, the American people each and every day. But we always come together and are always there for one another. Thank you. In times of need, and we've especially learned that Thank through you, the Vice difficulties President. of this year. Senator Harris, what would you say to Brecklin? Um, first of all, I, I, I love hearing from our young leaders. And when I hear her words, when I hear your words, Brecklin, um, I know our future is bright because it is that perspective on who we are and who we should be um, that is a sign of leadership and is something we should all aspire to be. Um, and that, you know, that brings me to Joe. Joe Biden, one of the reasons that Joe decided to run for president is after Charlottesville, which we talked about earlier. It so troubled him and upset him like it did all of us that there was that kind of hate and division. Um, what propelled Joe to run for president was to see that over the course of the last four years, what Brecklin described has been happening. Joe has a long-standing reputation of working across the aisle and working in a bipartisan way. Uh, and that's what he's gonna do as president. Joe Biden has a history of lifting people up and fighting for their dignity. You mean you have to know Joe's story to know that Joe has known pain, he has known suffering, and he has known love. And so, Brecklin, when you think about the future, I do believe the future is bright. And it will be because of your leadership, and it will be because we fight for each person's voice through their vote, and we get engaged in this election because you have the ability through your work and through eventually your vote thank you to determine Harris. the future of our country and what its leadership looks like thank you senator harris thank you vice president pence thank you so much for being with us tonight we want to thank all thank you senator harris thank you vice president pence thank you so much for being with us tonight we want to thank also the university of utah for its hospitality and most of all our thanks to all the americans who watched this debate tonight Again, our best wishes for a quick recovery to President Trump, the First Lady, and everyone who is battling COVID-19. The second presidential debate is next week on October 15th, a town hall-style debate in Miami. 
We hope you'll join us then. Good evening.